Well, thanks so much for sharing your garden with us, and we're going to continue with our recycling theme. I'm joined by William Glenn from Gardenville, and it's great to have you with us. Thank you for having me. You have brought a treasure trove of recycled objects that, uh, of course, are good for Mother Nature when you recycle, right? Absolutely. It's something very positive with sure. keeping things out of the landfill and using natural materials. But uh, you can also have a lot of fun and creativity. And sounds it looks to me like you guys are having a little too much fun out at Garden. We <laughs> definitely do have fun. That's right. That's right. Okay. Well, we're gonna do, I want to dive in and show off some of the things that we're talking about sure. here, Let's and do then it. we can uh, talk about uh, you know how folks at home might try to do the same thing. The first things we're going to focus on are some pallets. Now I know every nursery gets pallet load after pallet load of soils and materials but you've turned some pallets into some beautiful shelving and other things. Well, thank you. Yeah, that's that's the inspiration is just the sheer volume. And and also they're free. It's a wonderful resource. They're sturdy, mm. they're versatile. Um, you can do lots of different things. You can do everything from shelves to planters to vertical gardens, mm -hmm. uh, lots of different options. And uh, we're adjacent to a landfill. We're actually okay. a subsidiary of uh, a resource management company. Right. We like to say responsible resource management. Right. Right. And uh, so we get them all day, every day. And that was sort of the inspiration was okay. let's let's work with what we've got and right. maximize right. the resource. Well, uh, in, in this particular case, it's, uh, you've painted the, the palette a beautiful, bright color right. and uh, it certainly looks good hanging on a fence yeah and then you can actually use fence palings too as a recycled material that's right and uh, next to the pallet you'll see a birdhouse there and mm. uh, everything on that birdhouse is actually part of a, a brand we have called restore decor okay. that everything was diverted from otherwise having ending up at the landfill okay so um, it's it's beautiful for for kind of every reason I mean mm -hmm. it's environmentally sound it's good for you know not a huge cost of goods for the business right, right. Um, and it, it's obviously a a mini habitat for right. our feathered friends. Right, right. So the that's that's sort of the uh, paradigm there is is let's maximize what we've got. Why not? Absolutely. Well, you certainly have maximized it in the case of the planter over my shoulder here. Right. Uh, this is really beautiful. I love the, uh, love this concept. And again. Uh, you know, if you want to garden for free, in a sense, or create a planter for free, why not uh, just pick up one of the, the pallets that are lying around in a nursery yard, might go to waste somewhere, right. and uh, create something like this. And you filled it with well, beautiful yeah. winter annuals and other things. Yeah, I call that one limonata. It's the it's uh. it's an homage to lemonade. That's the the <laughs> clock was was purchased. That one wasn't upcycled, okay. but uh, okay. the uh, the snaps that that you know they work pretty well. You just put some landscape fabric. You know, make a curve in there, staple mm -hmm. them down, glue them down, whatever you got. Right. And the the purpose of demonstrating that one was just how easy it is. I mean, that one we didn't paint. You just pretty much turn it on your side, mm -hmm. turn it on its side, um, get those pieces of landscape fabric in it, and it's it's pretty much ready to go. Yeah. You know, and, good potting soil. And if you have a sturdy fence, you could hang it on the fence, or you could just lean it up against a wall. That's right. And create a kind of a, a space that way, just by defining the space by, you could use multiple pallets around you, and yeah. that'd be really cool. Sure. Um, I, I love this, and also on a fence right behind you uh, are containers uh, that are held to, in place by a hose, right? Yeah, it's a hose clamp. A hose um, clamp, right. Yeah, and that one was really inexpensive. They're, they're, it's just standard terracotta pot, but maybe with a little bit more of an interesting shape. It's got that waste on it so mm -hmm. that it can be held. Um, but that one is just an herb garden. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're going to tilt like that, that was sort of an artistic thing, but you have to make sure you're using plants that are pretty... Uh, adapted to not getting soaking wet, you know, right. so we chose rosemary, lavender, mm -hmm. things that like to be mm -hmm. a little bit dry between waterings. Right. And so that one's a really low maintenance, kind of a, I think it's a it's a beautiful design. Yeah, I, li I like the tilt to it too. And yeah, actually, I, you know, I looked at it immediately and saw it, oh, I could water the top ones and the water would drip down to the, the bottom containers. So it's a way of capturing uh, water dripping from the pots as that's, well. That's right, and and you'll see that with the the first palette, um, the the blonde colored palette, mm -hmm. as well as the pipes that we're going to show. And mm -hmm. uh, that you know you can really maximize that water resource just with gravity. And if you think about a standard air conditioner can make up to eight gallons of condensate a day. Right. Imagine what you could do with not even having your hands involved or watering. You could exactly. just be creative and innovative with those pipes. Right. Well, you referenced the one with the PVC pipes, and you've, here you've cut a section out from a fence, and you've hung uh, split 
PVC, right. planted strawberries and other things in there, and yep. uh, this looks very clever. I love this. Thanks. I, I like to be described as such, although it's not too frequent that I am. Um, <laughs> but but yeah, and it's got pecan hulls in there, which is also a byproduct of a, mm -hmm. of a food processing um, mm -hmm. industry, and so it's it's a lot of recycled materials, but it's just to show the sort of dexterity of the of the, mm -hmm. the you know this whole spectrum of things that we've got that we right. don't necessarily think of as planters but there's really no reason we we can't right well the crushed pecan holes are a very light form of mulch right. you know uh, and certainly uh, you know some of the richest uh, soils in central texas are those pecan bottomlands around the creek so Imagine there's something good in there for the plants. There's as something well. to it, and <laughs> cats don't like to walk on it, ah, so it can protect a, some of those. That's a that's a very good tip. Yeah. I like that very much. Well, another thing that y'all use there, and and this is something I'm really crazy about. You did it in my last garden and got lots of rave reviews about it, and that is the use of crushed glass as mulch. And what really excites me about what you've brought today is you've got all this blue glass, mm -hmm. which is, re I mean, the browns and greens, sure, you know, right. lots of beer bottles out there, I guess, in the world, but this blue stuff is awesome. It's the holy grail. It's the <laughs> one that everybody wants. You, you put an agave in the center of that, or just let it be. Uh, right. The way we, we chose to show it was also in an upcycled, uh, I think they're part of a disc break. Somebody's going to correct me, I'm okay. sure. So the, the, this itself is upcycled as well. Right, and uh -huh. we poured concrete in one just to show that you could have a heavy duty, right. uh, you know, Stepping paver. Stepping stone. Yeah. Right, and let me lift this up so we can get a little clearer view of it. But uh, And you've embedded the blue glass in the concrete when you've created this That's as well. right, and if you put a little bit of a lubricant in there, you can actually tap it out of that. So you uh -huh. can have, you can use it as a mold. Ah, so, yeah. okay. <laughs> clever. Yeah. Very clever. I but love that. I love the blue just by itself. I mean, I would yeah. just have that sitting out, maybe have a, you know, like agave peri eyes, an excellent one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You and I think alike. Anyway, well, I love the stuff. And you've brought a little collection of planters that really show to good effect, I think, the way this can uh, uh, look in the garden. And there's a benefit to using this as well for these xeric plants. Uh, that you're not going to be watering every day. Uh, having glass mulch on top is really kind of, it's very clever. It, it does reduce the, the amount of watering you, you need to do. That's Obviously, right. it is a mulch mm -hmm. after all. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, a lot of plants, if you're watering them every day in the summertime, the glass is going to get blown around or it's going to settle down. But for these species that you've chosen, it's just perfect, I think. Right. Well, and you know, it's also if you're if you're watering it constantly, you need to be cognizant of the fact that you might be growing something you don't want to. But typically in the xeric beds, where mm -hmm. these I think really show their beauty with mm -hmm. the stoic sort of nature of a succulent, yeah, um, they they you're not worried about growing Bermuda grass around the base okay. or some of those other things. Well, I think so. we're going to create a run on uh, b blue glass mulch at <laughs> I hope so. yeah. I, 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 and they're gonna have to beat me to it, I think. But okay. uh, an, another thing that you've brought along, and I think this is extremely clever now, these are, this is actually an apple crate, right? That's the, right. You know, That's and right. so for folks who shop and you see these all the time now in the stores, especially in the big box stores. That's right. You, if, you're, if you're buying by the gross or whatever, you, you see things like this. What have you created here? Well, this is just a little biodome to to hold the moisture to help get rooting done. And this was just a demonstration to show you don't need to take it to the nth degree. We don't use rooting hormone on these, and I probably get about eighty percent root. You mm -hmm. know, you're using the apple crate basically as a uh, as a place to root cuttings from plants. A little green. These are salvia lucantha, which That's is the right. Mexican bush sage, which is a great plant for our area. And they and a lot of these plants root very readily. It doesn't Easily. take a lot of babying. That's right. And I think that as gardeners, it's easy for us to go far down the road mm -hmm. and talk about, you know, mycorrhizae. I love to nerd out on that stuff. <laughs> but, you know, we, we got to foster. We sort of mm -hmm. got to help people to get involved mm -hmm. in gardening. And I think it can dissuade people when they don't have successes, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I usually will recommend, try something like this. It's easy to root. Right. Here's a method. And then as you have success, it's encouraging, then you get another gardener, right. and that's that's what it's all about right, for us. Right. And well, know? it's a very exciting concept, and I'm sure that people are inspired by your use of materials as well as the products that you sell. And there's a full shopping experience at Garden Villa, I'm sure, right? Absolutely, a full range of native and adapted plants, mulches, soils, composts, anything you need to get started or for the advanced gardener, for all sure. Right.
and people can learn more at garden-ville.com. That's right. So we really appreciate you taking time to come along and sharing all this with us. It was a pleasure. Thank you for okay, having me. Okay, well, again, William Glenn, uh, Gardenville. It's uh, uh, great to have you on the program. And coming up next, it's our friend Daphne. Mm -hmm.